We're continuing chapter 30, covering section 4, which is on Lenz's Law. Okay, so Lenz's Law says that an induced current has a direction such that, such that the magnetic field due to that current opposes the change in magnetic flux that induces the current. All right, so in the picture here, we have um, the magnet's motion is going to create a magnetic dipole that opposes the motion. So for instance, if you have a magnet with the north pole facing the direction of the loop and you're and you're moving it downwards the current is going to um, be induced such that the magnetic field produced by this current would oppose the motion so it's going to point it's going to have its north pole facing towards the uh, incoming magnet such that it, the two north poles would, would repel Okay, so the approach of the magnetic's north pole in the figure increases um, the magnetic flux through the loop, right? And we talked about this that in the last lecture, where we could have a moving magnet that's going to change the flux through a loop. Now, inducing a current in the loop, okay, this would induce current in the loop, of course. So, to oppose the magnetic flux uh, increase being caused by the approaching magnet, the loop's north pole, right, the magnetic moment, which we're going to use the uh, U as, the, the, the dipole moment, must face toward the approaching pole, north pole, such as to repel it. Um, so the current induced in the loop must be counterclockwise. All right, so using the right hand rule, we know that the current must be going around this way so that the direction of the magnetic field is going upward, right? And the direction goes from south to north in this case. Okay, so um, now if we next pull the magnet away, so if we instead push the magnet in that direction, um, a current will again be induced in the loop. Now the loop will have a south pole facing the retreating north pole of the magnet so as to oppose the retreat, right? Kind of grabbing it and not letting it go away. So you do want a south pole on the, on the top side up here. So this would be south and this would be north as the magnet is going away. All right, and then of course the induced current would be in the opposite direction. Okay. All right, so the direction of the current I induced in the loop is such that the current's magnetic field, um, which is B induced, opposes the change in magnetic field inducing I. The field is always directed opposite an increasing field and in the same direction as a decreasing field. Okay, so as you can see here, the field is going to be opposite. So if, if uh, your field is down, which means it's increasing, the induced field is going to be opposite of that. Um, but if the field is decreasing, these two fields are going to be in the same direction, right? So they're both going to be some, you know, situated like north to south or south to north. Okay. Now, if the north pole of a magnet uh, nears a closed conducting loop with its magnetic field directed downward, the flux through the loop increases, right? So as it's coming down here, we're going to increase the flux. If we have a magnet up here. So to, impose, uh, to, to oppose this increase in flux, the induced current I must set up in its own the induced field directed upward inside the loop as shown in figure A. So you can see that here. Um, then the upward flux of the, of the field be induced uh, imposes the increasing downward flux of the field. The curled right hand rule tells us that um, I must be counterclockwise as shown here. All right, so if, we, if this is our induced current and we can take the right hand rule, if we point our thumb upward, we can see that the current must be going around like that. All right, and then the opposite is true for uh, the other case. All right, so let's do a couple examples. All right, so the figure shows a conducting loop consisting of a half circle of radius r is equal to 0.2 meters and three straight sections. The half circle lies in a uniform magnetic field B that is directed out of the page and the magnetic field is given by this function. Oops. Sorry, I moved our camera over there. Let's move it back. Um, so you have 2.0 times, excuse me, you have 4.0t uh, squared plus 2.0t plus 3. All right, so now you have a magnetic field that's not constant, which means it's changing, which means we will get an induced EMF. Um, an ideal battery is also connected with 2 volts, and the resistance of the loop is 2 ohms. All right, so what are the magnitude and the direction of the induced EMF um, around the loop? Um, by field B at t is equal to 10 seconds. 
All right, so we're not going to worry about the battery in the, right now. We're just going to look at what the induced EMF is. All right, so we know that our induced EMF is going to be equal to the derivative of our flux dt, which is Faraday's law. Okay. Well, we know that our flux in this case is relatively simple. It's just going to be the magnetic field, which is uh, varying, multiplied by the area. Right? The area is constant. So it's just going to um, be one half of a circle, so it's going to be one half pi r squared. All right, so this is just going to be the derivative of b times a divided by dt, right, because that's our flux. All right, the area doesn't change, so that's going to be a constant. We can pull that out of the, of the derivative, so we're just taking the derivative of the magnetic field. All right, like I mentioned, our area is just going to be one half of pi r squared, because it's a circle. So 1 half pi r squared times the derivative of our function of the magnetic field, which is given as 4.0 t squared plus 2.0 t plus 3.0. All right, so we can go ahead and take the derivative of this function. So our induced EMF is then going to be pi r squared over 2 times 8.0 t plus 2.0. Okay, so now we want to find the um, the EMF at 10 seconds. All right, so at t is equal to 10 seconds. Oops. Our induced EMF is going to be equal to pi, and our radius is given as uh, 0.20 meters. That would be squared divided by 2. And that's multiplied by our function for the magnetic field. So that's 8.0. Our time is 10 seconds. That's 2.0. All right, and then we can see that our induced EMF it's going to be about 5.2 volts. All right, so now we want to uh, make sure we figure out what the direction of this, e of this induced EMF is going to be. So to define the direction, uh, we first note that in the figure, the flux through the loop is going to be out of the page and increasing. All right, so it's coming out towards us. And by the function, we know that it's increasing, right? Because there's no negative sign here. So as time increases, the magnetic field is going to be increasing. So because the induced uh, field, B induced, due to the induced current, must oppose that increase, it must be into the page, right? So if the field is coming out of the page, we know that the induced EMF must be into the page. Using the curled uh, straight hand, <coughs> choose curled straight right hand rule, we find that the induced current is clockwise around the loop, and thus the induced EMF must be. All right, so since the current, or excuse me, since the field, the induced field must be into the page, we put our thumb into the page, and then we curl our fingers around, and we see that this is in a clockwise direction. All right, so the induced EMF, or the induced current, I should say, is in that direction. Okay, so part B is asking, what is the current in the loop at t is equal to 10 seconds? Well, the induced EMF tends to drive a current clockwise around the loop. The battery's EMF tends to drive a current counterclockwise. You can see that it's in the opposite direction. Okay? So they're going to oppose each other. Um, so because the induced EMF is going to be greater, then the net EMF is going to be clockwise, right? So we found that our induced EMF is a lot greater than the one given by the battery, which is only 2 volts. So um, the induced EMF is, is going to dominate and will have a clockwise current. All right, so because the induced EMF is greater than the battery, the net is clockwise, and thus so the current. Um, so to find the current at t is equal to 10 seconds, we simply use Ohm's law. All right, so I is equal to the EMF. This is going to be the net EMF divided by R. So this is going to be the induced EMF minus the EMF of the battery divided by the resistance. 
So this ends up being 5.2 volts minus 2.0 volts divided by 2.0 ohms. Oops. And we get about 1.6 amps. All right, so that's what the current would be through the, through the loop. All right, so let's do one more uh, example. So let's do another example. All right, so this is going to be the induced EMF and current due to a changing non-uniform B field. All right, so the figure shows that a rectangular loop of wire immersed in a non-uniform and varying magnetic field that's perpendicular to and directed into the page. You can see here, well, this is, of course, all over the place, right? There's a right, the uniform field goes over the entire loop. Um, the field's magnitude is going to be given by B is equal to 4 times T squared times X squared. Okay, so in this case, not only is the B field dependent on time, but it's also dependent on the position. Right? It varies with our X position. Um, okay, so in the figure, B is going to be perpendicular to the plane of the loop and hence parallel to the differential area vector dA. So the dot product simply is going to get us BDA right? when, we're trying to, when we're trying to find the flux. Now, because the, and, and we have a DA here because we're going to be differentiating over this area, right? The magnetic field changes over the area, so we need to differentiate over the area. Now, because the magnetic field varies with the X coordinate, but not with the Y coordinate, we can take the differential area, DA, to be the area of a vertical strip of height H, because height's not going to change, it doesn't vary with height, and then with DX. All right, so our DA just turns into H DX, and the flux through the loop is going to be given as such. All right, so our flux is going to be equal to um, the derivative of B dot DA, which is equal to our derivative of B DA, right, which of course is just B times H DX, like we just mentioned. Right? And then this ends up being the integral, we just plug in for uh, b, of t squared x squared h dx. Okay, so treating t as a constant through, from, through this integration, because really we're just integrating over this area, we're not really concerned about the time. So we can treat it as a constant, and we insert the integration limits from z, uh, x is equal to 3 to x is excuse me, x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 3, right? Because that's going to be our width. Okay. Um, so when we do that, our flux is equal to 4t squared times h, which is, again, are all constants, times the integral from 0 to 3.0, x squared dx. All right, so we can just go ahead and simply take the integral of this. So this is 4t squared h. This is going to be x cubed over 3. And then our bounds of integration again are from 0 to 3.0. All right, so of course 0 is just going to get a 0 here, 3.0. will get us 3 cubed. All right, and then solving this out, plugging in our h value. h is equal to 2.0 meters. We can go ahead and find that our flux is going to be 72t squared, right? Still dependent upon t. All right, so now that we found what the flux is, we can use Faraday's law to find out what the EMF is. All right, so the EMF is going to be uh, the derivative of your flux divided by dt. So this is d of the flux, which is 72t squared dt, which is equal to 144t. All right, so that's the equation for our EMF. Now we want to find what the EMF is at t is equal to 0 0.10 seconds. Not all of this is actually given into the problem. They cut some of it, some, some of it out. So we'll go ahead and include it in. So at t is equal to uh, 0.10 seconds, our EMF is just going to be 144 volts divided by seconds times our time, which is 0.10 seconds. 
that's about 14 volts. All right, so we can see that over this loop, the induced EMF is going to be 14 volts. So the flux of, of the magnetic field through the loop is going to be into the page um, and is increasing in magnitude because B is increasing in magnitude with time. So by Lenz's law, the field, which is the, the induced field, um, magnetic field of the induced current opposes this increase and so is directed out of the page. Right, The curled straight hand rule um, then tells us the induced current is going to be counterclockwise. Right, So we need to curl our fingers around this way so that um, our induced field, oops, the induced, is going to be out of the, out of the page. Okay, that's it for this lecture. We will pick it up next time.